All right, let's give this a whirl. This is the USS Enterprise by Diamond Select Toys. <clears throat> this is the 40th anniversary edition, I believe. And honestly, I'm not familiar enough with the variations of the Enterprise from the original show that I could tell you what the differences are. Um, I know that there are differences. This is the one that was on sale when I started looking into collecting these. And, you know, it looks pretty good, but let's start with the negatives. And the first glaring thing is this piece of shit stand. <clears throat> you know, not... It's just horrible in every way, and this will be a common theme across most of the uh, reviews that I do here. I do have at least one version of every enterprise that Diamond Select has done. Um, well, I look at that. You can't see it, of course, but it kind of balances. I bet I can't replicate that. So, okay, the stand. Um, it's two pieces, which I can't separate them right now, so let's not, but you can see um, it's the Enterprise logo. And then it's a single armature, I guess, single thing to hold up the ship. And the top is a ball joint with a shaped plug on it. I do not really have a good setup for recording something this big. So the lighting kind of sucks. But uh, anyway, it's, it's, a, it's a plug. It only fits in one way. The ship has a little hole on the bottom of it there. And you stick that in the stand in that. Now, in theory, the ball joint idea on the stand is nice. Um, in theory. However, in practice... Oh, there you go. Can you see that? It's, I don't know how well the lighting is working out. That thing is cracked up. Um, so, it doesn't want to hold the weight. And, frankly, it was broken... Or rather, it, it had a hard time holding it up even before it cracked. It's just, you know, an added bonus, it's cracked. So you can kind of position it to get it some cool flying poses, but if you wanted it straight, don't breathe on it, because, especially with it cracked, it does not have enough um, tightness to hold it up. So that is the big, big flaw of this item the stand is garbage. Piece of shit. Um, you can see, I mean, it doesn't hold it securely, or firmly, maybe is the word I'm looking for. And so, if you did have it balanced, if you, if you had it on a shelf, that it picked up vibrations from other parts in the house, like somebody running down the stairs or something, you're just going to lose it. And, spoiler, if you have it on a shelf, and it suddenly does that, and the whole stand rocks, it's going to dive, and you do not want your beautiful little Enterprise diving off the shelf. Uh, spoiler for my Enterprise D review. Uh, let's see, was there another negative I wanted to talk about? Um, I don't remember. This ship is actually put together pretty well. Let's try and keep it on camera as I examine it. The Let's get rid of this worthless piece of junk. <coughs> The uh, const a common complaint of the Diamond Select Enterprises is that they can be really spotty on the quality, how well they're put together. You know, some people might object to, say, these screw holes or screw hole plugs. They're not terrible. I, I can forgive it. <clears throat> Technically, this is a toy, not a prop replica. It's not meant to be a high-quality item. It costs enough that I expect it to be higher quality, and most of the collectors that I have discussed these ships with kind of expect them to be higher quality, but from Diamond's point of view, they are a mass market toy. There's some really obvious plugs. They're not even the same color plastic. Or for some reason they stand out more. Anyway, but this one, this one is put together fairly well. There's not a lot of gappage between the various parts. Let's see if you can see that. I mean, there's a little bit obvious lines there 
but I'd say it's actually fitting together fairly well. There's not a lot of glue slop. The nacelles are nice, seem to be nice and straight. Um, I think they are, they're, they're parallel, they're, the nacelles are good on this one. Uh, the neck, there's a little bit of gappage where the saucer joins the top of the neck, but that's not too bad because most of the time you're not really going to see it from an angle where it's obvious. The paint on this is pretty good. It's very even. Um, you can maybe see a couple of marks where it's kind of been scratched on mine, but, um, but the paint is good. It's pretty clean. The, the pinstripes, there's a little bit of a blotch right there. But on the on the nacelle, it's good. There's a little bit of paint right back there by the shuttle doors. There's pinstriping on the back of it there. Um, I just read an article the other day that mentioned that the filming prop is actually only painted on one side because they only ever shot it from one side. So it was nice that Diamond, you know, painted both sides because as a toy, this looks better than to have only one half painted. The Writing on the top is nice and clean. No complaints about that. Again, there's some little pinstripe detail. Wow, I hope this shows up good on camera. Um, anyway, I'm I'm a fan of how this looks. <coughs> I'm terrified I'm going to break that off one day, but so far I haven't. Um, so one of the things that makes this a toy, or makes this cool, I really wish I could put it on the stand and demonstrate it that way, but I can't. Um, is that it's got a light and sound feature. Let's see if I can adjust my lights a little bit. No, this is just, I need a better photo booth. A better light box. Anyway, it's got lights and sounds. And the entire bridge and whatever section that is just pushes down. You get ship noises. I like that the lights are different colors. LEDs on that side, rather. A lot of ship noises. Is that one lighting up back there? Nope. Um, I believe... So the same lights that are on the top of the saucer are on the bottom of the saucer as well. It has a lot of sounds. A few of Kirk's lines. He sounds a little... <clears throat> Um, a little high pitched, like maybe they're playing it just a little too fast. But by and large, it's, I think the sounds are good. So anyway, um, I think this ship retailed for about 50 bucks. I'm pretty sure it was on clearance at FYE when I got it because they released this version, the uh, I think the version based off the HD remasters of Star Trek, as well as um, one based on the Imperial Starship Enterprise from Mirror Mirror. And I, and I swear one more version. I think there were three or four versions of the original series Enterprise out at the same time when I bought this. So it was on clearance. I think I got it for $15. Steal of a deal for $15. Um, I have no idea what the going rate is right now. But uh, it's a good ship. I would recommend you get at least some version of the original Enterprise. It's not my favorite version of the Enterprise. But it is a classic and it is really good. And, you know, it's where the show all began. <clears throat> Next time, I will be reviewing my latest, my latest uh, Starship Enterprise, which is why I thought it would be fun to review all of the ones that I have, because I just got a new one, the refit. But that's a review for another day. Thanks for watching. <laughs> I just realized I filmed that whole review with the lights on dark. I might have to reshoot it. Not only that, I forgot to demonstrate a feature. 
If you hold the light button for five seconds or so, oh, that's horrible. If you hold the button for five seconds or so, um, it goes into a lights on mode, which maybe, there you go. Now you can kind of see the nacelle lights are on. And it just stays on until you push the button again. So that's neat.